Hi everyone, this is Parker from testprepchampions.com and in this video I'm going to cover absolute value. I'm going to cover the three big points that you have to know. We're going to look at this conceptually on the number line and then we're going to look at some examples together. By the end of this video you should know everything that you need to know about absolute value for the GED test math section. So the first points to know here is that the absolute value of a number is its distance from zero. And we're going to look at this on the number line in just a minute. The second point is that the, the absolute value of a number is always going to be positive. And the third point here is that when you're doing problem solving, you treat the absolute value just like you would a set of parentheses in the order of operations, aka PEMDAS. So depending on where you're at in your GED test studying, you may or may not be familiar with this, uh, but PEMDAS means parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. And that's the order that you're going to want to do operations in when you're solving math problems. Like I said, depending on where you're at in your studying, okay, you may have already practiced this, or you might not have. It's not going to be that important here, but you'll want to tuck this away in the back of your mind for when this comes up in problem solving. So now let's look here at how the absolute value is written. So it'll be written like a set of bars and the number will be within the set of bars. So if we use negative seven here as an example, you would see a set of bars around the negative seven. Okay, so what's the absolute value of negative seven? Well, if we go back to our definition here, the absolute value of a number is its distance from zero. So let's look at zero on the number line and let's look at negative seven on the number line. So we want to get the distance from 0 to negative 7. So we would start at 0. We would say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So from 0 to negative 7, the distance is 7. So therefore, the absolute value of negative 7 is equal to 7. Okay, so what about the absolute value of negative 9? So again, you would see it written like this. You'd see negative 9 and you'd see bars around it, right? So again, the absolute value of a number is its distance from 0. So we'd start at 0 and we would go to negative 9 this time, right? So we would do, again, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So we see that from 0 to negative 9, the distance is going to be 9. Okay, so that's your answer. Okay, so you're not always going to be given a number line and you don't really need a number line to solve these problems, but it's really important to understand the concept here that the absolute value of a number is its distance from zero. So as far as problem solving goes though, number two is going to be the most important thing to, to remember that the absolute value of a number is always positive. All right, so if I give you an example like this, say negative 355. What's the absolute value of negative 355? Well, the number line's not going to help us at this point, right? Because it only goes up to negative 10. Okay, so we just have to remember that the absolute value of a number is always going to be positive. So the absolute value of negative 355 is just 355. Okay, so now what if, what if I gave you an example like this? Right, so what if I did... Here's a, that's a parentheses, then we have negative, negative 7 here. Right, and so let me read this again so that my handwriting doesn't stop you from getting the question right. So we've got a parentheses, when we've got a negative sign right here, then we've got the absolute value of negative 7. So what's going to be the answer here? Well, what you would do here is you would say, this negative sign that's out front of the absolute value, that's still going to be there. Okay, so the absolute value, so for this part of the question here, right, we know that the absolute value of negative 7 is going to be 7. Right, so our 7 is going to go here. However, that negative sign is still out front of the brackets, or the bars. So the answer is going to be negative 7 in this case. All right, and again, the absolute value of negative 7 is still 7, but the reason that we have the negative sign is because that negative was out front of our absolute value. Okay, so I'm going to show you a couple more examples here to drive this home. And 
you'll, you should be getting the point here. Hopefully this is making sense. Okay, so here's the first example that I wanna look at. It's negative three times the absolute value of negative two. So go ahead and pause the video and you can try that one on your own. Okay, so hopefully you pause the video, but if not, that's fine too. We're gonna keep going here. And so the first thing that I want you to do is let's rewrite this uh, so that we get rid of the absolute value. So I'm gonna rewrite this here and we're gonna keep the negative three the same. And so what is the absolute value of negative two? Well, the absolute value of a number is always positive, right? So we know that the absolute value of negative two is just going to be two. Okay, so I'm gonna just replace that with a parentheses. So we're now down to a multiplication problem, negative three times two, which is negative six. So the answer to the question is negative six. All right, so the key to getting that right was to first understand that the absolute value of negative two is just two, and then you do negative three times two, which gave us six. Okay, here's the next example. So go ahead, try it on your own if you want, pause the video. Okay, cool, so we're gonna go over this. So first thing that I always recommend that you do, um, so we've got five times the absolute value of 16 minus 70. So just like you would in an order of operations problem, you would start with the parentheses. So treat the absolute value like a parentheses and do what's inside of the absolute value first. So we're gonna bring the five down because the five is gonna stay the same. So what is 60 minus 70? Well, 60 minus 70 is going to be negative 10, right? And the reason is because 60 is smaller than 70. All right, so if we did it the other way around, if it was 70 minus 60, we would have 10 left over, and the answer is just 10. But since we're going a smaller number, subtracting it from a bigger number, we get a negative number, so we get negative 10. Okay, and so now we can rewrite this again. So I'm gonna draw an arrow here, and the arrow shows that I'm gonna rewrite this. So we're, again, we're gonna leave the five alone. And what is the absolute value of negative 10? Well, this rule up here states that the absolute value of a number is always positive. So the absolute value of negative 10 is just 10. So I'll just rewrite it with a parentheses. So we've got five times 10, and five times 10 is equal to 50, and we're done. So hopefully you understood how to do that. That's 50. If not, don't get discouraged though. We're gonna look at another example here now. We're gonna make this the last example here. And if you get this, you should be in good shape, right? You, you should understand all the basics now. It's just a matter of understanding the order of operations and how to do PEMDAS. So I'm gonna make a video about PEMDAS too. So you'll wanna watch for that as well. Um, but we'll touch on it a little bit in this example. So the example is gonna be 25 times the absolute value of 40 minus 70 plus 35 minus nine times five. So go ahead if you want, pause the video. Okay, whether or not you pause the video, that's fine. We're gonna to get to it. So the first thing that I wanna do here is again, redirect your attention to what's going on inside of the absolute value. So we're gonna look at everything that's going on in here. So I wanna note the parentheses because it's very important here. So everything in this first set of the parentheses, so I'm talking about 40 minus 70 plus 35 minus nine. Okay, I'm gonna start by simplifying this out. So 40 minus 70, I'm gonna write this down here. So let me pull this down here. So 40 minus 70 is going to give me negative 30. Okay, and so I've got negative 30, right? And I'm gonna add that to 35. So negative 30 plus 35 is going to give me positive five. Okay, so I've got that positive five, right? And let me draw this arrow over here. And so I've got positive five minus nine. Okay, so five minus nine is gonna give me negative four. Right, so at this point, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to rewrite the whole problem with what we've just solved, so that, just so that you can follow along a little bit better. So we've got 25, and we've got the absolute value of negative four, times five. Okay, so at this point, really, it's just a matter of doing 
what's inside the absolute value again. So negative 4 times 5 is going to be negative 20. So we end up with 25 times the absolute value of negative 20. And what's the absolute value of negative 20? Well, if we go up here to good old rule number 2, the absolute value of the number is always positive. We know that the absolute value of negative 20 is just going to be positive 20. So we can rewrite this one final time as 25 times 20. And 25 times 20, that's going to give us, I think, 500. I don't have a calculator handy, but it should be 500. If not, let me know down below. Let me think. Yeah, that should that's 500. So the answer here is 500, and we're good to go. All right, so you should understand the basics if you just really understand these first two. That's the key. you got to know the definition, the concept that we're talking about, the distance away from zero, and the absolute value of a number. You've got to know that that's always going to be positive. All right, and then from there, you've got to know your order of operation strategies for dealing with what order do you deal with the operations in. Okay, and like I said, I'll make another video about PEMDAs, um, so you'll want to learn that as well for the rest of the test, but that's about it. So know the basics, and you're going to be good for any question on absolute value. Make sure you get some practice in. You'll be good to go. Good luck. This is Parker from TestPrepChampions.com.